Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on moderator and mediator variables. So when you're looking at counseling research, oftentimes we want to understand causality. We want to understand how one variable can predict another variable or the value of one variable increasing, for example, might increase the value or decrease the value of another variable. So there's a few ways, there's a few terms we use to talk about these. Uh, one is independent variable and dependent variable. So independent variable is the variable that we manipulate and dependent variable is the score. So if we're working with clients and we have, uh, we treat them for say depression and we offer a new treatment, a new type of counseling treatment for depression, and we see decreased scores on some sort of depression inventory, uh, then the treatment for the depression would be the independent variable, and the scores in the inventory would be the dependent variable. Well, when talking about moderator and mediator variables, I'm going to use the example of linear regression. And in linear regression, the independent variable is referred to as the predictor variable and the dependent variable is referred to as the outcome variable. Now, For the purposes of this video I'm going to continue to use IV and DV uh, but know that those terms in, uh, are interchangeable independent variable and predictor variable and dependent variable and outcome variable are interchangeable when referring to linear regression. So let's take a look at moderator variables. A moderator variable is related to a change in the strength or direction of the relationship between an independent variable and a dependent variable. The moderator variables do not explain why there is a relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. They just explain a change in strength or direction. So I have an example here. So let's say that you're in private practice as a counselor, and let's assume you mostly see uh, clients in the evening, and you're very interested in treatment attendance rate. That is the dependent variable. And you want to see what type of factors influence the treatment attendance rate. Now what that would what the treatment attendance rate refers to is what percentage of scheduled appointments that a client attends. So I would hope in most private practices uh, the attendance rate would be fairly high uh, but of course there's going to be uh, variance depending on many different factors. So let's say that you have noticed through years of private practice that socioeconomic status tends to influence the treatment attendance rate. And let's say that they're positively uh, related. So the higher socioeconomic status the particular client has, the higher treatment attendance rate that that client would tend to have. Right? So when, when aggregating the data, higher socioeconomic status predicts higher treatment attendance rate. And you want to try to understand what moderating variables might exist in that relationship, between that relationship of socioeconomic status and treatment attendance rate. So I have three uh, moderator variables here that I've listed, and then the three possibilities that come uh, with a moderator variable. So let's say that one mo moderator variable is the miles from agency. So how many miles the client has to travel to get to the appointment. So as miles increase, the treatment attendance rate may tend to decrease. So that's a moderator variable, right? It explains the strength of the relationship. In this case, as miles from agency increases, the, relate, the strength of the relationship weakens. Let's take a look at another moderator, family support. As family support increases, 
the treatment attendance rate would tend to increase. So again, it's a moderator variable. It affects the strength. In this case, it increases the strength of the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. So then the third example of a moderator variable I have here is multiple jobs. So initially when you look at this, you might say, well, as a client has more jobs, that's, well, that's going to decrease the treatment attendance rate. So that moderates the strength, similar to miles from agency. As the miles from agency increases, the treatment attendance rate would tend to decrease. But with multiple jobs, you could actually have a change in the direction of the treatment attendance rate. So as multiple jobs increases, the treatment attendance rate would decrease dramatically. So it would, as multiple jobs increases, the strength of the relationship is still there, but it's now reversed. So now it's uh, a significant decrease in the treatment attendance rate as a client has more jobs. So to compare the miles from agency, as the miles increase, the treatment attendance rate decreases. But with the multiple jobs, the direction of that relationship actually switches. So the, you had a relationship where higher socioeconomic status resulted in higher treatment attendance rate, but when you introduce multiple jobs, that relationship, the one between the independent variable and dependent variable, actually changes in direction so that more jobs results in lower treatment attendance rate. So that's why it's distinct from the miles from agency example. The relationship between socioeconomic status and treatment attendance rate in the miles from agency example is still positive. It's just weakened as the miles increase. Whereas when a client has multiple jobs, the direction actually changes. So these are the three types of moderators that can occur. One that weakens the strength of relationship, one that increases the strength of relationship, and one that actually changes the direction of the relationship. So let's take a look at mediator variables. So remember, moderator variables affect the strength and or the direction of the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. Mediator variables are different. They explain the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. They explain why or how the relationship exists. You can tell when a variable is a mediator when four conditions are met. Independent variable variations account for variations in the dependent variable, meaning there's a relationship between the IV and the DV. Independent variable variations account for variations in the mediator, or in this case, the presumed mediator, because you're still testing for it. So this is, a, this is an important point. The independent variable variations in the independent variable account for variations in the mediator. So there's a relationship between the IV and the mediator. The presumed mediator variations account for variations in the dependent variable. So again, there's a relationship between the presumed mediator variable and the dependent variable. And when the mediator is added into the model, for example, a linear regression, the relationship between the independent variable and dependent variable decreases, uh, or in some cases is eliminated. So let's take a look at an example of a mediator variable. And I'll use the same example before of socioeconomic status being positively associated with treatment attendance rate. So as socioeconomic status increases, treatment attendance rate increases. But what could really be explaining that is simply having a higher socioeconomic status in and of itself really causing a higher treatment attendance rate? 
or are there other factors? For example, depending on how your agency is situated, uh, it could be access to a motor vehicle is crucial for clients to be able to reliably arrive at your agency for appointments on time. So if socioeconomic status is increased, that's positively associated with access to a motor vehicle. And access to a motor vehicle is positively associated with high treatment attendance rates. You include access to a motor vehicle into this model, the relationship between socioeconomic status and treatment attendance rate sharply decreases because we see that access to a motor vehicle is actually explaining why the two seem to be related to one another. Now, of course, there's other reasons why there's other mediator variables that are possible when socioeconomic status uh, increases. Right? There's, there's other mediator variables that could become available uh, and relevant to this model that could increase treatment attendance rate. But this is just one example that shows how uh, we, we think we understand there's a relationship between these two, but we're really not sure what the true cause is. In this case, you know, say we find that the true cause is uh, access to a motor vehicle. So indirectly, increasing socioeconomic status would increase treatment attendance rate, but it's access to a motor vehicle that is directly responsible for the increase in the treatment attendance rate. So now I want to take a look at confound variables because the model I showed you in the previous slide looks a lot like uh, a confound, like, like the mediator variable could be a confound variable, but it's not. And here's why. Confound variables do appear similar initially to mediator variables. But there is no causal relationship between the independent variable and the confounding variable, meaning the independent variable isn't causing the confounding variable. There can still be a relationship between the independent variable and the confounding variable, just not one where the independent variable is causing movement in the confounding variable. If I go back to that previous slide, the relationship between socioeconomic status and access to a motor vehicle could not exist if this were a confound variable. But since there is a relationship between higher socioeconomic status and more access to a motor vehicle, meaning a positive relationship between these two, this is a mediator. So now I'll give you an example of what a confound variable would look like. And I'm going to switch the example up here. Let's look at the relationship between the number of vacation hours. Let's say this is for students. The number of vacation hours that the students have, the number, number of hours that they're on vacation, seems to be negatively related. There's a negative relationship uh, between this, the number of vacation hours, and the number of hours the students spend studying. So initially we think, oh, there's a cause here. As vacation hours increase, the number of hours studying decreases. And at its face, that does uh, make sense. If somebody's on vacation, uh, they're probably not going to do a lot of studying. So there may be uh, a weak relationship between those two. However, there's another variable that could explain both, and that's that it's summertime. In the summer, the number of vacation hours is going to increase because students would be out of school and the number of st hours studying is going to decrease well, for that same reason. So summer explains both the increase in the number of vacation hours and the decrease in the number of hours spent studying. And notice here this is a confound because the number of vacation hours doesn't cause summer. Look at the direction of the arrow there. The number of vacation hours is caused by summer. So summer is a confound variable.
and there may be some relationship between the number of vacation hours and number of hours studying. It may be a small causal relationship, but it's not significant when you compare it to uh, the confound variable of summer, which explains a large part of the change in the number of vacation hours and the, the change in the number of hours studying. I hope this video uh, looking at moderator and mediator variables has been helpful to you. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.